Thank you so much for taking the time uh, in the middle of what must be probably one of the busiest seasons of our lives, even though we are confined to our homes <laughs> and our children are confined to our homes and our husbands are confined to our homes. Although your husband and my husband both are critical um, people in the workforce. So thankfully they get to leave occasionally. So, um, Jessica Harris, I've known you for a little while, some years. Uh, you're a whole life designer. You reinvented yourself as a whole life designer and a color therapist. And I wanted to chat with you about exactly that. What is whole life design and what can we learn from you in a time like this um, about designing our lives and, and, and coming out of this circumstance that is impacting everyone on the globe better than when we entered it um, and using it as an opportunity for growth. Yes. Well, so I work with women in transition mm -hmm. and I help them to redesign their life. And so, yes, right now actually is, even though it seems very overwhelming because we have, you know, we're like really in the middle of a shit storm. <laughs> Um, right now is a really good idea. It's a really good time to be looking at our life and what it is that we no longer want in our life and how we want to move forward in our life. There has never been a better time. I think that we are all, um, we're all being faced, um, with the ugly parts of our life right now, you know, with the parts that we have known for a really long time, no longer serve us. And, um, those are right in our face. Um, maybe it's because we can't go out into the world um, and, you know, do our job um, that we love, or maybe we're, maybe we're really happy that we don't have to go to our job right now. Um, or maybe we're at home and we're being faced with the things in our home that we know we needed to change for some time. Um, and they're really in our face right now. So right now is definitely a good time to be assessing those things and thinking about how we want to move forward after COVID-19. Mm -hmm. You bring up some really interesting parts and I, I wrote down here as, as you're chatting, we're all being faced with our ugly parts and that sounds like really like a harsh thing, right? It's not something we would necessarily choose into, um, but it's part of our reality. And I'm immediately thinking of particularly women, although I do think it affects men as well, but maybe differently, um, is that how, how much shame that brings up. Mm -hmm. you're, you're confined in your home, uh, which I believe is the right thing to do. And I'm so grateful as we're speaking and as we're taping this there's studies that are coming out about how really it's working um in our communities that those of us who are really heeding that advice um are are flattening the curve and that is exactly what we set out to do so as these ugly pieces come up you're confined to your home you really know where to go um, if you have family you're confined with your loved ones and these ugly pieces come out, now what? How yeah. do you deal with that? And how do you do that with, uh, with a little bit of, of grace and mm -hmm. patience and not mm -hmm. let that ugliness sort of spill out on everyone else? Yeah, that's really hard. <laughs> and there's no perfect answer for that. Um, I think grace is key here because, you know, uh, yeah, a lot of grace. Definitely a lot of grace. Um, and I think that, um, yeah, grace, grace is the answer. <laughs> grace is the answer. Grace my is the answer. Um, you know, and I'm being faced with my own ugly things right now, and it's very difficult for it to not spill out into my life in these four small walls that we're, that we're living, that we're living in. Um, and so I'm really, really being careful to um, take really good care of myself right now and honor the way that I feel. I think, you know, as humans, we want to be action oriented immediately. 
And sometimes we need to, uh, you know, and we're given, we're, we're being given this time right now to do just this is sometimes we just need to sit with the ugly parts mm. and we really just need to examine them. Um, and like I said, grace, <laughs> grace that yes, we all have our shit. I call it our shit. It's our shame. It's our self-sabotage. It's our have tos. It's our insecurities. It's our trauma. And all of that is coming up right now. It's all bubbling to the surface and there isn't a whole lot that we can do with it other than acknowledge it and see it for what it is. And at some point we can use that to move our life forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a more, in a more aligned way, we can take our shit and look at it and be like, well, that's not what I want. Okay. So I would rather have this. (laughs) You just did this thing. It took me a second to figure this out uh because i've only had seven cups of coffee today uh shit (laughs) is an acronym right so how's that go okay so it's an acronym i came up with it's called our i it's shame or it could be self-sabotage i think they kind of go hand in hand our have to's our insecurities and our trauma okay this is really good (laughs) Shit, I've got it, you've got it, we've all got it. <laughs> I mean, I sure sure as heck got it. Like I'm yeah. I'm telling you, like you know. Um, okay, so shit, um shame, self-sabotage, has to, insecurity, and trauma. Mm-hmm. So do you know what the first thing that comes to mind is um when you own your own business? And you feel responsible for obviously yourself, your family, if you, you know, are providing for your family, your staff, your team, and then your clients. And I feel like a lot of us are in that space right now. I know you are a sole entrepreneur. Um, I am, although I have a small team, I'm still technically considered a sole entrepreneur. Um, And then I think of all the clients we serve. And Mm -hmm. all the shit that comes up in business and in our endeavor as a result of what COVID is bringing to us, Uh, which I don't even want to get off a beaten track here and uh, go into COVID's personality. (laughs) And (laughs) (laughs) it's I don't even want to go there. But the shame or the self-sabotage that comes up in business and the the have-tos that are actually a distraction or maybe um, they've been changed so dramatically, we're we're now not even sure what that means Mm -hmm. and the insecurities and that the trauma that inevitably informs everything we do in business. So I'm curious about how we can take this acronym of shit and how are you doing that and applying it to designing our life um, and designing our our business and i actually don't think that th- those two things are separate from each other just no they're not and I, I know you you feel the same way like when people say i'm wearing different hats it's like i hate my i hate hats uh i have and we're all under one roof now we're all Here under we one roof i'm not <laughs> changing my hats out uh no. and so how do you apply this acronym and what it brings up to designing in this time? Yeah. So for me personally, and what I'm doing with my clients, because they're, you know, all like, like I said, all the shit is bubbling to the surface. Um, I'm really bringing it back to the basics. Um, we can't do everything right now, even though we want to, we are super powered women and we can do a lot of things, but we can't do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can do a whole lot more if, we get back to the basics. And when I'm ta- what, what I mean by the basics is that we get back to the foundation of self-care. Mm. And what does that mean? And so um, for me and what I teach my clients is that the foundation of self-care, it's like the um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The foundation of the hierarchy of needs is physiological. So how are we taking care of ourselves physiologically? If we don't take care of the body that we are in, we can't take care of anyone else. Um, and so something that I do with my clients um, is I have them keep a little picture of themselves when they were young. This is little Jessica. 
and she's a beautiful mm -hmm. butterfly. Adorable. <laughs> um, and the picture of the little self is to remind you of how you should take care of yourself during this time. How would you take care of little Jessica so that she could be a beautiful butterfly on Halloween? You know, would, does she need extra naps right now? Does she, you know, does she need food? Does she need water? It, it's very, those very basic needs that you would guide your child. I mean, we're moms, you know, it's like all of those things that you would guide your child to do, guiding yourself to do those basic things right now is extremely important. Um, maybe you need some rules and regulations for yourself. I know for me personally, it's like, Jessica, you can have two cookies. You can't have all, the whole bag, okay? You've got to have the whole bag one day, but we're not going to do that anymore. It's just really, really basic, foundational, physiological self-care. And from there, if, is, if we take care of the basics and we can stop the spinning, because I think right now a lot of us are spinning. We're, you know, we're living in fear. Um, we've got all these different as you know like you said people call them hats to wear and now they've been all merged you know into under one roof and we're just like spiraling spiraling and so meeting those foundational needs allows us to stop the spiral and from there we can take the steps we need to take whether it be in our home life or our business life to you know to move our our life forward in a better direction Love that. So starting, uh, and, and I'm familiar with that hierarchy, um, but starting with yourself, right? Starting mm -hmm. with self-care begins with you. And we both have read tons of um, articles and blogs, mostly blogs, to be honest, about how self-care is selfish. And that used to be a big trend. Mm -hmm. I would say about, what, 10 years ago, that was a big conversation that self-care was very yeah. closely associated to selfishness. And what you're really saying is that it starts with just taking care of your body, mm -hmm. right? Just being, being with yourself and whether that is, I know that for me, as of late, it's been, I have, I have to take time for myself first thing in the morning. I can push really hard throughout the day, but if I don't get that 20, 30 minutes of just enjoying my first cup of coffee without yes. any external input, um, it's, it, I, I'm, I'm a mess if I don't do that. And the yeah. other thing I would say that for me is self-care is paying attention to what the first piece of information is. Um, and I'm curious about this from you because I found from my personality, uh, what's being, what's been modeled to me is a bunch of, as women like you that have helped me re, uh, you know, reconfirm what self-care really means and that has nothing to do with selfishness, that it's everything about taking care of yourself. Um, so once, once that was re, uh, reshaped and I'm, I'm sure there's listeners who think that, um, self-care at this time can feel selfish. Um, but for me, the learning was also not taking in information that was prescribed, right? So uh, lots of people start with meditation or uh, devotional or journaling. And in this time, I want information. So I had to learn to take on information that was actually good news or valuable or furthering. So whether that is reading a magazine that is not yet mentioning anything about COVID because mm -hmm. the new prints aren't out <laughs> or yeah. a book that um, I reach for often is in the company of women, just reading something and taking something in that is information and then moving to that reflective time. Um, mm -hmm. I found has really shifted the way that I can tackle my day. So what would you say to people who are achievers and drivers and they're an extroverted maybe even, and they're, I'm really talking about myself. <laughs> what would you say <laughs> to me <laughs> about, about uh, being kind and being patient and self-care during this time? Mm. Well, again, I think we, we got to take it back to grace here um, because during this time, we're still, we are, because we're sorry, I'm, I'm like you, 
and because we're strivers, we're achievers, overachievers, <laughs> um, we want to be able to drive it home like we have always dr drove it home. You know, like we want to be able to check off all the things and we want to be able to, you know, do all the calls and do all the things. And um, I think that for me, what I have to do at the beginning of the day is really check in with myself after I've done my, my practices. I have a similar practice kind of thing that you do, but I really have to check in with myself and what my intuition is telling me um, I can handle for the day. Is this a realistic list of things that you have for yourself, Jessica? Um, are you actually going to be able to tackle all of these business things and homeschool your kids and talk to your husband and sweep the floor and take the dogs for a walk? I mean, what's, what's the re we like, what is the real thing you can actually get done here? What feels most important? And so I've, what I've been doing just during this time is making a list of three things that I know that I need to, that I need to do in my business every single day. Um, and that's it. And if I get more done than that, great. But those three things are, are the priority. Um, and that has really helped me find some grace mm. with myself so that I don't have to, um, I don't have to have that spun out feeling of like, uh, or the shame that comes up when you don't tackle the whole entire list and you right. didn't homeschool your kids correctly. And uh Oh, the dog hasn't been walked yet. And, uh, you know? Yeah. Then you spin it. So mm -hmm. I've seen you on Instagram share with your audience about, um, these, these wonderful Orosoma bottles, color bottles. Uh, and you're mm -hmm. the very first person that I, that I even knew or introduced me to this. I knew it was, this existed. So I'm sure there's people watching this or listening to this that are like, what does that mean? What does it do? How does it help mm. me? And what's the difference between that and, you know, me having a glass of water with food coloring in it? So what does it communicate yeah. to me? So tell me a little bit about color therapy and the method that you chose to engage color therapy or engage people with color therapy? Yeah, so color therapy, um, the Orosoma bottles, it's a system of color therapy that facilitates personal growth and awareness. And so basically you are the colors that you choose mm. um, and they're indicative of your gifts and your talents, um, things that are currently happening in your life on an emotional, mental or physical level uh, or spiritual level uh, they're indicative of where your energy is at right now, and it can also help you see where your energy is headed. Um, I use the color products every single day, and when you apply them topically to your body, they bring ease and balance back to your energetic system. So they're definitely, um, they've definitely been key in my self-care practice during this time because we all need a lot of ease and balance <laughs> in our energetic mm -hmm. system right now. Um, there was another question that you asked me and that lead me, lead me back to the question. So the question is really about how, how does it, how does it help you practice or help mm -hmm. your, your client? And mm -hmm. what is the difference between choosing the bottle and like choosing the color in any other way? So like cray a box of crayons. Yeah. So the, the colors too. I think I think the big thing about the colors that's so important is that they help you come back to yourself. Mm -hmm. So they help you remember who you are. And so um, when you choose a color, I mean, even if you chose the same color out of a crayon box, I could help you to remember who you are, um, just because of the science behind color therapy. Uh, but there are 117 different color combinations within the, the Orosoma color therapy system that allows, uh, that allows me to really take a deeper look under the surface. Maybe some of this stuff that maybe you know about yourself, but you're not quite sure you got a lot of shit that stands in the way of you, like really accepting these beautiful pieces of yourself. It helps me like really get under the surface of who you are and help you, helps the client to see who they really are so that they can 
they can put their best foot forward so that they can show up confidently in the world as who they are with their unique gifts and talents and share that um, from a very authentic, you know, confident place. I love that. I love that you chose this uh, method that is, is something that we um, really don't know anything about, right? Like we, we all are surrounded by color, but people don't necessarily know what the color turquoise means or right. what the color yellow brings out. And so what I love about that is that your client, and I'm imagining myself being your client, all of my preconceived notions and all of my judgments about whatever comes up, I can't, I can't even bring those to the table because <laughs> I don't know anything mm -hmm. about the color turquoise or the color yellow or the color green or whatever color there may be out of 117 choices. So it's a really open kind of method to engage in conversation and engage in self-discovery. Mm -hmm. So I find that to be such a wonderful tool because there you are, just you with your color bottle. And then you, Jessica, who's going to explain this to your client and start uncovering these layers that they're, they're coming to you with that they may or may not be aware of. Yeah, it's super cool too for somebody to show me their colors because I get to see your raw beauty. Uh, you know, that, it, that maybe you don't see in yourself just yet. And then I can marry that together with whole life design and help you create a life that's meaningful to you. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a really, it's a really powerful, it's, it's almost diagnostic, uh, you know, the color system is, it's almost diagnostic um, in the sense that I can, I can see what's going on with you on so many different levels and help you realign with who your authentic self is. I love that. Okay, so how do people engage with you on that level? Like, is it is it obviously right now we can't go to your office and visit your your practice, your studio, but um, there's ways to do this virtually, right? So yes, what does that look is. like? Yeah, so I'm actually in the process of moving my office home because I cannot be without the bottles. Uh, and so I can't get, I can't go work in my office. And so and you talk about your color bottles, come. right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> color bottles. I can't live without, no, it's not any other bottle. <laughs> I can't live without the color bottles. And, uh, oh, I got a lot of sun coming through here. Sorry about that. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, so the color bottles are coming home and I have just, um, I had this idea this week to do, um, actually it was a friend's idea and I loved it so much. I've just been kind of marinating on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 15, 20 minute mini sessions. So they're going to be 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, oh, 15 to 20 minutes. mini sessions. And so it's a small version of what I would normally do a first time color client, we'd probably spend 90 minutes together, really deep diving into your colors and what they mean for you. And, um, you know, devising a plan to move your life forward if that's something that um, you're interested in. So it's a, it's a very lengthy process. Um, but I'm going to do 15, 20 minute quick mini sessions. Uh, it'll just help people take a look at where they were prior to COVID. Um, the energy that kind of surrounded their life at that time, where they're at right now, and um, what energy is, what, what, what's the energy that they're moving towards, what's calling them forward, so that they can help, you know, hopefully find, I'm going to call them glimmer sessions, because I want them to be a glimmer of hope in this, um, in this dark time. So yeah, it'll just be a great tool, I think, for people to utilize and, um, you know, hopefully see, hopefully see a little spark that, you know, of something that they can use to move their life forward mm -hmm. in a more aligned way. So um, I, I hope it's okay to say this and, uh, and ask you about this and you can tell me yeah. if it's not and we can, you know, take it out. <laughs> but yeah. um, because I've known you for some time and I've, sort of seen you engage your value proposition. I talk about value proposition often. And I think when I first met you, you were talking to me about 
uh, well, two things. Uh, you you were you were a youth group leader. You uh, mm -hmm. were actually leading the youth group my daughter was in, mm -hmm. and you were also talking about health. So um, I had this experience of you, nutrition, health, of you taking care of young people's place in life where they were at and their questions and what they were wrestling with and just being having fun with them and giving giving them an experience in in a youth group um and i just that that's just right there it's like leading kids and leading young people takes a certain kind of value prop in life because you're you're dreaming and visioning and shaping for them um when they're so young and giving them those those tools um, and then also health and nutrition. And you were talking to me about my nutritional questions and my health questions. And so uh, from there, then uh, that's what I met you. You've evolved in this, into this woman, business owner, into this life that you have created for yourself and your family, where you are an authority on designing life, designing a, a healthy, balanced, integrated life. Um, and you've, adopted these tools like color therapy. So I'm curious how you have seen your value proposition grow and morph and become everything that it is now. Um, and you can go as far back as you want to um, and, and connect those pieces for me. Mm, gosh, well, yeah, I mean, I think, I think at the beginning, I, you know, when I first did my value proposition, I had an idea of what I wanted that to look like. And then as I got into the work and doing the thing that I had, you know, redefined my life to do, um, I think that that, it, it became more solid. What I was, what I had thought that I, you know, that I wanted to show up and, and do. Um, and in my value proposition, I think it's, um, I think it's to inform, guide, and I can't remember my third one. I could pull it up, but um, inform, guide, oh, and inspire action. Mm -hmm. So that's my, my value po proposition. Um, and so, yeah, it's just kind of grown and morphed as my business has grown and morphed. It's ever evolving. Um, yeah, I mean, and if I take it back, to the time where I was doing, I think that this type of, that these about the, my value proposition, even though I didn't really know what I was doing when I put that down on paper with you, I was like, yeah, that sounds really good. <laughs> I like that. That sounds great to me. If I look back in time, I can see that that has always been with me. Mm -hmm. It's always been what I do mm -hmm. inform, guide, and inspire action. It's what I did with teens. It's what I did with violent ex-offenders. It's what I did with the developmentally disabled. It's what I did in homeless services. It's what I've done in all of my work. Um, and it's what I do as a whole life designer. And it's what I do as a color therapist. And so it's really, you helped me put words to it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I love what you, well, thank you for saying that. But I really love what you, you just mentioned. That's really, I, be, I believe this is to be true. And I've never met a person never worked with a person that this wasn't true for. So obviously from, with my limited um, experience, this to me is what I would call a fundamental truth. And that mm -hmm. is that everybody has a value proposition mm -hmm. and it is connected to their purpose, to their, and their purpose being their best yeah. life, their mm -hmm. best experience. Um, and I, I'm not trying to be Pollyanna-ish about it. It's not all going to work out 100% all the time. No, yeah. But it is almost, it, it is very much like um, the, the thread that holds us and holds us together and pulls mm -hmm. us forward, which is why I chose a thread for, for my logo, because it just means so much to me. So to know you and to watch you engage in your value prop and then and then almost being like having to remember what it was because it's so embodied it's so in you i imagine that getting color therapy and choosing my color would feel a lot like living your value prop 
You may not mm-hmm. necessarily know everything about it. You may not really engage it in that way, um, but it's there and it's your fun- fundamental, foundational guiding um, principle, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, that's what I love about, and you're absolutely, I see it, what, seeing these words, and I didn't memorize your value prop, but seeing them, it's like, absolutely, yes, you inform, guide, inspire action. Um, and I love that it even hints to what you mentioned earlier, that you are a driver, you are ambitious, mm-hmm. you, do, uh, you do want to see change and you want to have an impact. And of course, that word action is there for you. So it just yeah. illuminates so much about where we're at and what we're doing. And so when we're going into this, into this crisis situation, I wonder how many of us feel like we're not really able to engage our value proposition. Mm -hmm. Um, we feel stifled, we feel painted into the corner. And so that may be what brings out a lot of that, um, ugly part. Yeah. So aside from you started and you told us about self-care and taking care of your physiological needs, it's everything from nutrition and water. And, you know, um, I I feel like getting up in the morning, taking a shower, (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> like, like whatever it is for you. Yeah. yeah. I love yeah. people who can live in their yoga pants, but I also feel like I need to get up and I need to get ready so mm-hmm. I can, I can engage my day, but whatever it is for you, what else is there we could do? If there was three steps, mm. right. Or, or four or five things, whatever it is, like one, two, three things that you can delineate for us physiologically taking care of ourselves. So what else is there? Yeah. And, you know, I think it's unique to the individual. You have to find what works for you. And so what works for me may not be the thing that works for you. And what works for you may not be the thing that works for me. And so I tell my clients all the time, play with this. Um, Get curious, too, because I'm not the end all be all of information. There is so much information out there and you can you can find other resources that that help you. Um, some things that I'm, that I'm currently doing right now, um, and something that I do have most of my clients do anyway, when we're working together is to create a sacred space, um, and sacred and meaning that it's just for you and it's not selfish, (laughs) but it's just, it could carve out a little teeny tiny corner of, of your home. For me right now, that is this teeny tiny space between a window in the bed. And I've seen you in the bathroom and I'm like, she's in her sacred space. Yeah. It's just a space where you can go and you can be quiet and you can scream cuss words if you need to, uh, you know, or whatever it is that you need to do there. Just carve out a little spot for yourself to go. Um, I think that, um, I think that that's really important. You can do whatever rituals you want at that spot if you want to or not, but just having a spot to go to. Um, another one that I'm doing right now is a four count breathing ec- exercise. Um, and instead of counting one, two, three, four on the in breath, and then one, two, three, four on the out breath, I use an affirmation and it's, I breathe in peace. I breathe out peace. And just doing that for a couple of minutes, I have found has been extremely effective to, overcome some of the fear and anxiety that we have right now, that spiraling feeling that we're getting. Um, And, you know, I've heard other people do it. Like I breathe in, I breathe in peace. I breathe out fear. But I think too, that when I breathe in peace and I breathe out peace, I'm sending peace to the rest of the world, peace to the people in my house, you know, peace to the dog on the carpet who's sensing all my (laughs) anxiety. And so I want to share the peace that I'm breathing in. And so that's been very effective for me um, right now. And it's also a, um, it's a color therapy, it's a little color therapy trick as well. I love that. Uh, um, And then the other one that um, I usually I do every single day and I usually bring this into my practice with my coaching clients is to make a present and future gratitude list. And so I do 10 present gratitude things. So what am I, what am I grateful for right now? Um, And that could be the coffee in my cup. It usually is. (laughs) 
Um, you know, it could be that I got to have my husband home with me last night. He works in the ER, you know, so maybe I got to sleep next to him last night. Um, it could be the sound of the birds outside. It can be whatever you're experiencing in that moment. It could be, you know, hot water. I don't know, money in the bank, whatever, 10 things that you can be grateful for right now. When we focus on gratitude in the present, it helps, you know, all of, it helps all of that nasty energy that's surrounding us right now to just kind of fall through the, to the wayside. It's like, oh, wait, I do have something good going on in my life right now. And then the future gratitude list um, can be a one, two, three, four, five. It can be as many things as you want. But I usually say pick one thing that you want to create a future memory of and be grateful for that. It's something that you want to call into your life that hasn't happened yet, but I want you to be grateful for it as if it's already happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so that you, Because when you're grateful for it, uh, for something that has yet to happen, you are, you are basically creating a, like an, an energetic um, connection to that future memory so that you can draw it in more easily and manifest that in your life. I love that. I, I love that you are, um, you've packaged this and I, I know this is like, the, this is what you do, right? This is part of design. Design is not an accidental sort of haphazard thing that's coming together it's thought through and um that that breathe I breathe in peace and I breathe out peace I've never heard that before and I I don't I, I've never heard that before I don't, I've never heard something positive coming in and something positive coming out um and I totally agree with you it's like that resonates so deeply with me the things that I breathe out because in, in, for me, in my state of, um, shit, (laughs) so your acronym there, um, (laughs) when my state of spin out, I, the last thing I emote out are positive things. Um, so practicing that, but then also the present gratitude and the future gratitude, um, it reminds me of a practice that we had in our family. My gosh, when the kids were little, my girls are teenagers and adults. Um, but uh, we practiced um, thinking about the memories we want to make. Uh, we were all about making memories. And so when something didn't work out, it was we were packaging it as a memory. It's like, but this is a memory and what are the good things that are happening right now that are still really fun and we'll remember this. Um, And then intentionally creating new memories, um, but into the future. And we kind of stopped doing that because the kids got older and we got busier and we just kind of fell out of practice. And this present gratitude and future gratitude reminds me of that. And those were really happy times because there were Mm -hmm. things to look forward to and you were, you're already setting yourself up for for gratitude um that's such a beautiful thing so thank you for reminding me of that and for sharing that practice with us because it's something we can do no matter what our circumstances are no matter where we find ourselves in our lives and it's it's not taking away from the hard places that we're in right now and the worries that we're holding and the anxiousness that we're uh dealing with but it's, these are some tools and techniques to really try out and uh, practice, see if they work. So thank yeah. you for, for that. Yeah. Do you have any tools that you, like, I'm thinking of a worksheet or, you know, um, of, of something that, like, this is my executor in me, a worksheet or something I can do <laughs> to, <laughs> to find my, to, for, for somebody to find their affirmation how do i find the affirmation that actually resonates with me so what are some of the words that we can practice or perhaps what you know what you were talking about with the gratitude uh bit how can we practice the things we're grateful for in the moment you gave that and and then the grateful the things we're grateful for in the future is there something we can do something you already offer that that we can download on your site or anything like that Well, stay tuned. I am in the process of recording a meditation, a guided Mm -hmm. meditation. So that will be coming up soon. I would say probably by the end of the week, I should have that up on my website. So if you sign up for my newsletter, 
um, at jessicaleeharris.com. That will be delivered to um, that'll be delivered to my newsletter subscribers, and so that will be a really great place to uh, you know try a practice. Um, as far as finding an affirmation, um, if you send me a DM on Instagram, I'm on Instagram. That's my preferred platform. If you send me a DM on Instagram, I am happy to help you come up with something that feels good and okay. aligned for you. So two things that are here, two assignments we can we can execute on immediately and start feeling good about ourselves. <laughs> okay, so first, uh, jessicaleeharris.com, sign up for your newsletter. And yeah. then you are on Instagram, what's your handle? It's at Whole Life Designer. Okay, so Instagram at Whole Life Designer and you, and we can direct message you. Uh, yeah. And if you, so if anyone's listening has a question about um, how to write an affirmation, how to begin the practice of, of gratitude. Listen, if you're, if you're hearing this and you're thinking, who, who needs that kind of help? I do. Um, I did. And, I, and, and, partially of why I'm, I'm doing these interviews is because um, I believe in women entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs who are uh, continuing to be innovative during this time, but also we all need each other and we all need the encouragement and the support. So yeah. not knowing where to start with gratitude or not knowing how to write your affirmation, I'm, I will be the first person to direct message you on that. Yes, please it, do. It's it's not, there's no shame in that, uh, in that vulnerability and knowing that you need a little bit of extra support. Yes. Um, and that our affirmations, again, we come from this background of, or I do come from this background where any need we have felt selfish. Um, mm -hmm. so, so creating an affirmation for yourself, taking care of yourself, taking care of yourself first before you take care of everyone else. Those are all things that we're having to continually practice um, as we're pivoting in this time. So I'm so grateful for you to remind me and remind us that we all need that practice, all need that help, and that you're there to support us um, every step of the way. And that you have some really cool ways to do this with with uh, or some of the color therapy and the concept of whole life design those are all some really really cool methods that we can engage with you that are kind of unique um and and interactive so thank you thank you thank you i think they are <laughs> yeah they are they're lovely thanks for taking the time what's on your agenda for today what are the three thanks things that you're me. going to do um, so three things. Well, one of them was to have this conversation with you. Thank you the so much. Other one, <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, and the other one is I just joined a BNI group. So I, uh, I joined, that. I'm the first member to ever be inducted virtually. So gay me. <laughs> Paving the way. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to set up my BNI Connect uh, membership site. Um, and then the other thing that I'm going to do is write some copy for my website for, um, for the mini, the mini color sessions for the glimmer sessions. Glimmer sessions. That's it. I love that. Um, please, yep. please promote those on your Instagram. We're all going to follow you, uh, because Definitely. we all need a little bit more glimmer in our life. Congratulations on being a BNI member. I heard Thank about you. that through the grapevine and I'm so excited for you because, um, yeah, um, we all need little bits of glimmer and you bring that in the best of times, Never mind during this time. So, uh, yay on on your three things and yay on us getting connected and me being one of those three things. So it yeah. if you missed out on this conversation. <laughs> have a good day, Jessica. So good. Thank you so much. You have a good day too. Good bye to bye. see you. Bye. bye.